Hello everyone, it's been a while. Um, I hope you're finding these videos useful. Um, I recently got an update from a colleague of mine who was unsuccessful in his CSER application and there were some important lessons to be learned there and I thought I would just share those with you. Um, this is primarily for the surgical candidates and uh, this was the rejection letter that he received. It's pretty much standard format and it starts with an unfortunately and so that's when you know you haven't been successful. Um, the rest of it is fairly standard. What's important is to go through the recommendations um, and see uh, what can be done uh, to improve uh, then onwards. Now for a surgical candidate, uh, the logbooks, the PBAs and CBDs are of paramount importance. I cannot emphasize enough the logbook needs to be exactly for six years. Do not submit seven or eight year logbooks. If you want to submit evidence of your prior surgical experience, you can do so, but make sure that your six-year logbook is separate and it's so clearly marked as that's what the SAC committee will be looking at. In addition to the six-year logbook, you can submit further evidence, but make sure it's labeled as prior surgical experience and label it separately so that they do not confuse it with the main six-year logbook. Um, each logbook needs to have summary lists, particularly if you are putting them as uh, postings or by procedures. Um, if, for example, you are submitting your CSR application today, you need to show the logbook from 2013 to 2019. And so you divide it into 2013 to 14, 14 to 15, and so on and so forth. It can be either in six month or one year increments. Now, moving to SAC indicative numbers, please do not forget these numbers. Every bit of this is extremely important. Um, without the indicative numbers, they have no way of ensuring whether you have reached the standard required or not. For the PBAs and CBDs, please put summary lists, which summary list means you put an entire page uh, prior to the PBAs um, in which you list them individually in order. So for example, if you need about, if you have about 15 or 20 PBAs, just label them that and put the pages in order as they would come in the label. Similarly for the CBDs as well, this is so that they can ensure that all the topics have been adequately covered. The idea is to make this user friendly and so that they can easily check and uh, complete the tick box. It's very important to include all PBAs and CBDs and not just the mandatory ones. This is very important to show progression. Um, Part of the problem of applying for CSER is some of you may already be quite experienced and uh, showing progression in all may be difficult. That's perfectly understandable. Um, but at least if you showed in your previous um, logbooks or PBAs um, some evidence of progression that is outside the six year gap, uh, that would particularly be helpful. Um, so once again, I'll clarify that. Um, some of you may have grade 3 or grade 4s throughout your 6 years logbook for some procedures and that's fine. But if you have a pre-existing um, logbook from outside the 6 year period, do show separately that you were grade 2 or grade 3 at one point, if that makes sense. Um, like I said before, your logbook should be structured. It should be for 6 months or 1 year periods and don't forget. Another thing people easily seem to be caught out on is journal clubs. It's something which is easily missed, um, but it's quite important. There are a few ways of doing this. One um, is to do a CBD, which is what most people do for journal clubs. Um, second, you can publish a reflection in a magazine or journal, which is not so easy. Another way of doing it is to get a letter from your educational supervisor stating that you have attended um, the CBD, the journal clubs and that they are um, extremely, that you have been uh, contributing quite well to them. Um, so this, that's it, a quick summary and I hope this helps and uh, good luck with your application.